Hello Aquarius! Welcome to my channel, The Mother Speaks Tarot. My name is Allison. My channel is still pretty new. It's just over a year old, so if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Um, if you have subscribed, if you subscribe today, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I love you all. Subscribed or not, all my viewers, thank you for being here with me. Can't have a channel without viewers. I love you all. All right, so those of you who are new and don't know, I'm also an author. I'm writing a series. It's an action-adventure love story on superhero twin flames called Perception, the two yet one, book one here. I've read this book aloud live on Facebook and uploaded all those videos here for you to enjoy for free. Um, just know that book two is published and available. And all the links that you need for my books are in the description box below. Also, if you would like a personal reading, the information to contact me is also in the description box below. Okay, so welcome. Welcome back. Little explanation of what's up, uh, what's going on here in this reading. Um, I had a, a viewer ask me if I could use my Toth deck. Um, it was the first deck that I used uh, when I first started this channel last year. So. I was like, well, okay, but I wasn't really sure when I was going to do that. But then I started seeing Toth everywhere, and I realized that he wanted it right now, this week. So today we're using the Toth deck, and um, of course I got out the um, Isis Oracle deck that I was going to use at the end of the reading, but they both said no, and... Um, Toth reminded me that he is, because I was like, but you're a masculine, and this is, you know, the mother speaks, and and um, I actually got messages from him in in June for Father's Day, so I was, I was like, what's up with this? And he's like, but I'm, I have messages, but I'm supporting the feminine very much, so use your moonology deck. I'm a moon god. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my god, of course. Yasmin, this is by Yasmin Boland, artwork by uh, Nix Rowan. I, I've used this for clients and it gives me timelines and stuff like that, but um, he's a moon god and you know, this deck, the, the cards that have been coming out have just been magical, okay? Magical. And then Isis is like, you know, don't just use my oracle, um, ask my sisters. Isis is in here as well. Um, also, Ma'at, Toth's wife, she came out for Libra, which was really awesome because Libra basically is Ma'at energy. It's balance. It's, it's divine justice and fairness and stuff. So I'll be pulling some cards from these decks at the end of the reading. And if I need to clarify anything, I'll use the Tarot of the Cloisters by Michelle Leavitt. Okay, so as a reader, I read minor arcana cards as messages about your free will. I read major arcana cards as messages about your divine blueprint. That is, the plan that you wrote for your own life before you incarnated so that you would encounter and hopefully learn certain important lessons of life that, when learned, raise the vibration and wisdom encoded in your soul. It is possible to lower in vibration during a lifetime because of our free will, but if you can manage to continue to rise, you may come to a lifetime where you are what we call enlightened, like Toth, like Isis, Jesus, Buddha, and many others. Um, we know that these enlightened people uh, affect a great deal of positive change on our planet. And so when I'm looking at your major arcana cards, it's a lot like looking at fate, but it isn't because of your free will. Now, there are times where stuff happens in our lives that we absolutely cannot control. Those times are indicated to me by the Wheel of Fortune card, which you do not have. However, there is another card that um, I, I have been um, led to learn also can sometimes mean fate or destiny. And you do have that. Let's get started. All right, so at the heart of everything. Oh, here's another thing, guys. This deck has absolutely no reversed meanings. Okay, what it means when a card is upside down or reversed is that the energy of the card is there, it's just not fully in effect, it's not fully manifested, it hasn't come into being just yet. So what you have here is the tower, okay? 
a lot of we got masculine energy here mars energy um but it hasn't come in just yet the tower is um a surprising sudden change it can be an epiphany it it can be everything falling apart okay um being shown this eye you may know that this is coming but um, now there, now I'm being shown this dove uh, of peace here with this peace offering. It does come with peace, okay? But it hasn't quite manifested just yet, okay? The masculine energy is breaking something, going to be breaking something down that you probably don't need anymore. And what we have here is the Leo card of lust. We just had the Lion's Gate. I, you know, the, the Lion's Gate energy has been very powerful in all of these readings, which is surprising because of Toth. He's not, um, you know, he doesn't seem related to the Lion's Gate really to me in any way. Maybe, maybe it's because he's Atlantean. Anyway, um, so this is the card of Leo. In this deck, it's called Lust and not Strength. Um, there may be some lusty feelings going on here, but however, I feel like you're being very strong as you see this tower moment coming in. You're controlling yourself. Um, that's what the, the strength card is, is the, the feminine controls the masculine that, um, you know, that she controls it and tames it very gently. Okay, these are all different parts and aspects of herself. She has attained herself and now she is relaxed and free to enjoy um, pleasure. However, I, I can't um, overlook the fact that this is the card for Leo. And this is the energy that's crossing this tower moment that's coming in, which is an Aries energy, which is also fire. Okay, this is fire energy right now okay and the the energy with this lion's gate is a as a great deal of fire energy and then you have leo here so this may uh you may have noticed that this tower is about to fall maybe this weekend or you know during this time of the lion's gate energies now what's at the root of all this is um now, th this can be two things, because like, like I said, um, you do have lust here, okay? The, the devil can mean a very hot, passionate relationship. It can mean lust. It can mean sexual lust, okay? Um, you look at, look at this devil, though, okay? This devil is kind of cute it's kind of smiling it's got the third eye see this third eye the third eye is open for their intuition right you have this um, very masculine um, design okay we have two very sexual looking cards so um, it could be that this tower might be a good one. Okay. Um, who knows? Maybe you are on, on the verge of realizing just how much uh, passion you have for someone. Now, it doesn't have to be that either. Because we always, we know that um, the devil card is representative of Capricorn. So this could be a Capricorn that you're thinking of, and it can be as simple as that. Okay. Um, however, this could be obsession, toxicity, things like that. All the things that the devil are. Sometimes the devil will represent your job because you are bound to it. You got to go to work every day. Whatever you feel bound to, especially if your job is something that you don't particularly enjoy or you have to do the same thing every day. But, um, you know, um, there is just a lot of sexual energy coming from these cards, guys. And 
Um, I, I actually don't remember feeling this much um, even when I used these for months and months last year. There is some heavy sexual energy going on here. But um, this could be like, a, you know, it, it could be a Capricorn, but that doesn't mean that this, there isn't uh, all this sexual energy going on. I have had two uh, major relationships with Capricorns and, um, well, let's just leave it at that. Now, here is your recent past that's moving out of your life at this time. And what's interesting about this card is, is for me, these two go together in this particular deck, okay? And this is the Four of Pentacles, okay? And it is the unmanifested Four of Pentacles. Now, a lot of the times, the Four of Pentacles will be the miser card, holding back, um, watching your money, but also holding back... Um, with your heart, holding on to your, saving your money. Now, this particular deck, though, look, this says power. And here we have a Capricorn influence again. And this is all earth, air, fire, and water. And then up here, we've got the symbol for the sun, the little circle with a dot. The sun represents happiness. But so in this particular deck, when I get this card, it means rebuilding the tower. It means building a strong, stable foundation because that's what the fours are. They are stability. This is the tower being rebuilt. However, this tower was not built and maybe it wasn't stable because now it's falling. It's about to fall. What's up with that? This tower did not have a strong foundation. It was not powerful. Now the next two cards that I have, um, they're future cards, and um, you have some, um, possibly some options coming up or some confusion. <clears throat> Pardon me. This is the Seven of Cups. Um, this will come after the change. I'm getting that because there's a Scorpio energy here. We've got Venus up here for um, Venus rules Libra and Taurus. She is also all about abund abundance and stuff. So this is like, I feel like this is a bunch of options, but this particular Seven of Cups also says debauch, okay? That's when you might be drinking too much, you might be smoking too much, you, you know, eating too much, whatever. This has to do with addictions. So does the devil, okay? Now, this, this is not manifested just yet. This is still a possibility. And then what we've got here is this queen of discs in the reverse. The unmanifested queen of discs, which is earth energy, which again is Capricorn, okay? Three cards of Capricorn. Maybe she just, you can tell. That's Capricorn. So there may very well be a Capricorn involved here with you. And, you know, it, it might be that this just wasn't a, a solid foundation to build on. It could be if you're involved with a Capricorn, um, maybe it's not uh, going to work out. But this is also energy as well. So this, it, this queen of discs is a nurturer when she's upright. She's like a doctor, nurse type of energy, sometimes even, uh, you know, as simple as being a nurturing parent. This doesn't have to be a woman. However, this is a feminine energy. She is very secure. She's got everything she needs. She's got her health and her wealth down. 
when she is in the reverse, that she is not fully manifested. Okay, so both of these future cards are still in their possibility stage. They are beginning to manifest, but they haven't just yet. And what else is upside down? The tower and the unstable foundation. So I just kind of feel like when this tower does finally fall, these may, might flip. Okay, and then you'll see uh, that you might have a bunch of options, but you might be confused as to which one to choose because you may be, in, you know, caught up too much in, in um, you know, some sort of addiction perhaps, or, or you might just be confused. You might just not know what to do because then what if this person all of a sudden becomes really kind and nurturing when right now things aren't going so well? Or maybe she stays in reverse and this Capricorn leaves your life and then you have all these options of a new partner or a new love interest. Hmm. A lot of earth and fire right off the bat. The only thing here, because this is fire, this is fire, this is earth, this is earth, this is earth, this is water. Now, your hope is the lovers, but it's not manifested. So uh, you may be hoping to break up. You may be hoping to make the right choice. The lover's card is also a card of choice. However, it is also still in the reverse. So this energy depends on something else coming in. Maybe this is the choice that once this tower falls, if you can narrow these choices down to two, then, you know, maybe that's when this will this will flip and you'll be able to make that decision. You're hoping to make the right choice for you. This is the Gemini energy. But this is also, to me, the lover's card is the twin flame card. Other people um, will read the two of cups as the twin flame card, but this is what I see. Okay, so the lover's card can be a twin flame union if that's what you're um, thinking about. Twin flame unions are people who are, um, see the thing is, is that you don't have temperance here. You, you can't really just skip to twin flame union. And since I don't really see, um, the, well, here, here's your current state of being, okay? This is the emperor. The emperor is part of the twin flame. He is the sacred masculine, okay? This is Aries energy, more fire, okay? Now, I was just saying, you know, um, if I saw temperance in here, which would be the third fire sign because they're Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, and here you have Aries and Leo, if you'd have had the temperance card, you would have had all three fire signs. Um, but you don't have the temperance card, and the temperance card, when it's right side up, re represents you being your own twin flame, being able to uh, accomplish the grand alchemy of life of balancing out your masculine and feminine energies in their sacredness and then you become um, like a new type of being where you uh, you draw in someone with that exact same energy and then what you get is an emperor and an empress who are both emperor and empress in one okay but, but what's this is the sacred masculine he's fully manifested in your life so there may be an Aries but there this just might be that this masculine energy is predominant in your life right now because look at all this fire here and and this is an Aries energy okay Aries is ruled by Mars and this is Aries look at all the uh, the the rams and stuff in there so this is this is fire fiery energy so this is what's going on right now the sacred masculine not the distorted masculine the sacred masculine is at work in your life right now 
And the sacred masculine is who is knocking this tower down for you so that you can build something better. Now, this is your fear card. And so as a, wow, victory, more fire energy, Leo, lion's gate type energy right there. Six, which is the number of love. Okay. But this is in the reverse. Okay. So um, if, if you were manifesting during lion's gate, which a lot of people were doing, I know I did, you are afraid that your lion's gate manifestation is going to fail. This is a victory, but this is in the reverse. So as a fear card, this would mean you being afraid that your victory won't come in, whether it's for these um, lion's gate energy manifestations or not. Okay. Now, here is your potential outcome. And I say potential because this is, um, you know, we all have free will. Again, we've got Venus here. And there you go. I don't think you can see that very well, but this is um, your energy, Aquarius. This, yes, this says uh, a defeat. So um, something, like I said, might get torn down, but it's being torn down by the sacred masculine, not the distorted masculine. The sacred masculine is beginning to knock down this tower. You may feel defeated. You may feel like you're uh, conflicted. Your mind might be conflicted um, about what to do because swords are mental energy, they're intellect. And then in your future, what you have up here is all these options, but with this debauch, so you may be conflicted for a long time. You see what I mean? You might be feeling defeated because your mind is conflicted about which to choose. This is also um, gossip and slander. And when people are just um, acting fools, acting like children, okay? And, you know, you see this? This is an upside down five-pointed star, which is also, you know, so, but here's what I want to tell you. There's times in our lives when a tower needs to fall and it can be very traumatic. It can be, uh, it's usually shocking. These towers are shocking. And it can leave us feeling conflicted and defeated and confused. But it, it, it does eventually come around to, to when, you know, these challenges are things for us to heal from. Learning to tame our inner beast. Okay? Learning to tame things like, you know, lust. I mean, lust is something that is, you know, I, I don't think it's wrong. But if it's out of control, if it's um, uh, if it, there's a sexual obsession or a sex addiction or something like that, then no, it's it's not um, the best for you. Not that that's what's going on with you. It, it might be, but there are times when the the divine steps in to destroy something that is no longer worthy of us. Okay. The, the divine, the emperor, will definitely go to war for his people. He will defend his people. He will destroy things that are um, threatening his empire, his people. And so if you look at the sacred masculine energies that way, that's why this is being broken down, okay? And so this may not feel very good, but... It's what is meant to happen here is healing, okay? And walking away from something 
Um, this is what's at the, uh, the underlying energy of this whole read. Pisces energy here, walking away, just, just getting fed up, um, over, emotionally overwhelmed, deciding that, look, I, I got eight cups here, but I don't need the two more to make the ten of cups. I'm done. I don't want any more of this. This is a tower moment. Yeah, because there, the, um, the energy of taking care of this garden that was planted was not taken care of. It wasn't being nurtured. See, this nurturer right here is not in the nurturing energy, okay? And uh, there was a lack of independence and there was a lack of of gaining anything substantial yeah and there you go this is all about beginnings and endings libra um, energy here uh, beginnings endings truth balance the balance of life masculine and feminine so masculine energies are balancing these energies out um with, you know, everything that the planets have been doing right now. And, um, and, and you're going to benefit from that. All right. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, comment, share all that good stuff. Let's see what cards we can get from the Moonology and Goddess Guidance decks. And we'll close out your reading. You know... Also, you might be feeling like the boss right now. This is boss energy, okay? What else would you like to say to Aquarius? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Let's go ahead and... Yeah. Okay. All right. Sisters. Yep, it's Ma'at. Mm -hmm. Justice, fairness, balance. Ma'at is Toth's wife. She says hi. If she pops out, I'm going to be like, what? Because she popped out during Libra's reading, and Libra is justice, Libra is balance. I'm a Libra. Wow. Oh, Mary. Thank you so much. Holy moly, who is that? I'm going to go find out who that is. Is there anybody else who would like to come out? Thank you so much. Anybody else? I'm going to go one more time because I do things in threes. Three is my number. Wow, thank you. Okay, that's a lot. Let's see who we got down here. All righty. All right, let's... Well, let's start with the goddesses. You got Mary Magdalene. Unconditional love. Love yourself, others, and every situation, no matter what the outward appearance may be. What she's saying is be grateful for this time. You may be going through some tower moment. You may be going through, you know, when you get to this, be grateful. Be grateful for everything. Spirit wants you to be grateful for everything that includes your lessons, which is your suffering. Because the suffering leads to healing, which leads to happiness, feeling better. Sometimes people don't understand that. Um, but if you can learn unconditional love, you will be much happier in life. This is the nurturing energy. Nurturer. Okay? Bridget, 
don't back down. Stand up for what you believe is right. Okay, so what I'm feeling from this, I mean, just look at her. She's like, don't mess with me. I've got fire energy in my hand, man. That's what we're dealing with right now. Fire energy, this lion's gate. And don't back down. Don't back down during this conflict. If somebody is talking gossip about you or slanderizing you or something, don't back down. Toxicity. Quiet time. Sigi. Sigi, Sigi, Sig. Uh, take some quiet time alone to rest, meditate, and contemplate. Oh my God. That has been a huge message this week. It, it, it's come out in so many different ways. I, I just came out in uh, Gemini, it came out yesterday. And a couple of the earth and the earth readings. Diana, focused intention. Keep your unwavering thoughts, feelings, and actions focused on your target and you will make your mark. Okay? So here's what I'm feeling from this. See this? The sphere? Victory. Of not having victory. Okay? Yeah. There is definitely some kind of battle that you're um, either going through or going to be going through. So what do you want out of this? What, what did you want out of this in the first place? Stay focused. Stay focused on you as well. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I just said, Ma'at says hi. If she comes out, I'm going to be freaking out. Okay, so the, your situation will be handled in a fair manner. Hello, Ma'at. <laughs> See, she's balance. She's peace. She is the essence of beginnings and endings. She is um, the balance of life. And like I said, she's Toth's wife. And Vesta, home, home. Mm -hmm. Your household situation is improving either through a move or a healthy change in the occupants. Okay, so this obviously has something to do with your home. There's a lot of orange here, too. There's so much uh, creative sacral energy here. Let's see what we got with your moon cards. Yeah, it's time to release negativity. Full moon in Scorpio. Scorpio season is coming up. It's in um, November and the end of October. So maybe by the time the full moon in Scorpio comes around, you may have released the negativity. Okay, yeah, so it's starting to really look like there is some toxicity going on here. There, luck is on your side. New moon in Sagittarius. Okay, so Sagittarius comes after Scorpio. The new moon comes after the full moon. Wait a minute. Um, that may or may not be right. You know, sometimes we get whatever, whatever. But what I, here's what I was going to say. Look. Mm -hmm. Sagittarius energy here, okay? Um, definitely Archer. Stay focused. Stay focused because luck is on your side. Um, I actually, I don't know when, uh, when um, this luck is going to come in for you. New moon in Sagittarius. Check, check when that happens. Maybe that's when all this is going to be um, over or, yeah, it's your focused intention. I don't know. Am I, am I making sense, guys? Sorry. Bring love into the situation. New moon in Aquarius. That's you. That's your new moon. You know, your season isn't coming around for a while, but you know what? I am sure getting a lot of new moons in these readings. Okay, so this, you know what? This may be a timeline for you as well. Like the love, bringing the love into the situation may happen during your new moon. But um, 
it I feel like all these new moons in here which is it's like we just had the new moon in in Leo oh my god you've got another new moon in Aries see this is what I'm saying all these new moons um, so I'm not sure if these are timelines I, I just really that's why I was like I don't know when this is gonna happen because these are actually um, look you know we just had this new moon and in Leo and it's extremely powerful and so I just feel like all these new moon cards are kind of um, pointing that out that this energy this this Lionsgate energy is super powerful it's gonna carry you into um, the next few months I think and then look at this you know it's time to take action new moon in Aries now Aries uh, the new moon in Aries I I, um, I don't know when that's I don't know if this is a timeline or if this is just what's happening now you may have to you may need to take action right now because this is your energy right now okay and it's saying it's time to take action so wow that is you see you see how these this is magical this is synchronistic this is stuff that I there there's spirit is really talking to us here guys so um, how much control do you have over this situation I can gauge that by the number of major arcana to minor and um, you have one two three four five ah half of this is part of your divine blueprint um, Aquarius half five out of ten cards this is huge for you this is a huge time of change this energy of the lion's gate that we just went through is very active in your in this change that you are going through your focus is the masculine energy here I think that's what's being adjusted in you and um, it's time to release the negativity is what it's saying okay now Scorpio is the most psychic sign in the zodiac and I've been getting this whole third eye message okay so oh I just put it next to see these purples your intention you may have set intentions this last weekend during this full moon energy um, and it's it's saying make your mark T release the negativity but stay focused on, on what you want and and your your third eye knows holy moly all right well um, please don't forget to like also uh, subscribe and all that good stuff that's what I have for you at this time Aquarius I hope you enjoyed your reading see you next time